Hi, it's Kim and welcome to my video today. Today I want to talk about a fig buttercup. This is a little wildflower that is growing in my area here in Ohio and it does grow across several states. I understand it originated in Pennsylvania, but it is just becoming an invasive wildflower that sprouts in the spring. It's very pretty. It has the tiniest little yellow flower, real bright. It's a dark green leaf that you uh, may found, have found in your garden and in your lawn, but it is really taking over the ecosystem because it's crowding out other wildflowers that we have in our regions, like um, trilliums in the spring, marsh marigold, which it's sometimes mistaken for, even our native violets, trout lilies, things like that just can't compete with this thing because it's such an aggressive spreader. As you can see in this area, it's just blanketing the ground. It smothers out everything else, growing by the little corms, the little bulblets that grow on its roots. They wash into the um, drainage ditches, rivers, streams, just wash them down streams. If there's any kind of flooding, it would just carry them across the plain, across the prairie, and they just keep growing and keep growing and spreading. And they smother out all the other uh, woodland plants. And we do like to have a diversity of woodland flowers and wildflowers so that we have a diversity of the insects that visit our gardens. If these things get into your lawn, get into your garden, they can take over just like they do in the woodlands. So we do want to see if we can get rid of them. They have to be dug out because you really can't do anything unless you get rid of the little root bulblets and um, underground roots that um, seem to be so aggressive in their takeover. But if you see it, uh, you'd probably recognize it because it is one that is just so common. It is something that some people find, um, you know, edible. And I am not one of the foragers. I don't know anything about the um, nature of this particular plant other than it does say it's poison if you don't treat it exactly correctly harvest it young enough etc I understand you're supposed to get it when it's young and before it blooms but we really need to see what we can do to get rid of this plant where we don't want it and to not let it spread so wildly now this is in an area kind of near where my lawn is the moisture just pulls it from this particular area and lets it stream over into the lawn and we try to kill it in the lawn and I try to keep it out of the flower beds. The flowers have a long stem, and again, they're really cute. The leaves are kind of heart or kidney shaped and have some real deep veining. But that root is almost like, looks like a dahlia root, except a tiny version of it or a balloon flower. It's just a real big, um, I don't know, cluster of sweet potatoes, potatoes, that type thing. So if you do see it, try to dig it out. If you pull it, that's just going to leave the bulblets because after it blooms, it's an ephemeral and it just, the flowers die off, the leaves die off, and it's gone. And all that's left are those little bulblets under the water, I'm sorry, under the soil. And then they're just washed downstream by water, rains, flowing, anything flowing will, in a, even a drainage ditch, We'll wash it into the next yard, into the next field, into the next prairie, and we don't want that. So I just thought I'd make a video to let you be aware of that. Now the marsh marigold is very similar, but it has um, four petals to its little flower. So we're not interested in the marsh mar uh, marigold. This one is what's called fig buttercup or lesser celandine celandine. There is a major celandine or a greater celandine and that's a poppy family. So that's a different plant. It has its invasive qualities too but that's a lot taller plant. This particular one is just a little ground hugging one. So just something to be aware of and to kind of be responsible for it not spreading into the systems and taking over our complete ecosystem and us be blanketed by lesser celandine. 
So, thanks for watching this morning. I appreciate that. I went out and filmed this in the um, cloudy morning before it rained, so the little celandine flowers weren't open yet. And otherwise, they're open and real cheery looking like a daisy. And did notice a nice little friend there on the ground rummaging around seeing what he can find.